Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we are going to be looking at the best air source heat pumps of 2025. Now this is something we do every year, we've just updated it with our recommendations for 2025 and I'm going to be looking forward to bringing those to you. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Right, so before we get into it, I just want to talk about a few things that you may have forgotten or a little bit unsure about and just to clarify before we, we start talking about the actual models we're going to recommend. So firstly, uh, we just need to say that this is really about air to water heat pumps. We're not going to cover air to air heat pumps today just because air to water are what the vast majority of people in the UK are looking for. And if you are looking for an air to air heat pump review we might bring something out later in the year but today we're not going to be covering those secondly i just want to talk about the difference between a monoblock heat pump and a split heat pump as a lot of the models we're going to be recommending they actually come in both of these um, varieties so it's important to understand what the difference is between the two now a monoblock heat pump has one big outside unit that does all the heavy lifting and that's connected into your home via pipes which contain water and a split heat pump is the opposite that has a smaller outside unit and that is connected into your home to an inside unit uh, via pipe work that contains refrigerant fluid so let's talk about a little bit of a difference and the advantage between each one so the advantage of a monoblock really is that you only have one unit and you have less space taken up inside because you don't have an inside unit um, it also can be installed by a plumber, it doesn't need to be installed by a qualified um, engineer because the, you're not dealing with a dangerous refrigerant, well it can be dangerous if it leaks outside. With a split unit, the main advantage is you can place that outside unit up to 50 meters away from your property. Because the heat is not going to be lost inside the pipework, as it will be with a monoblock unit, that means the outside unit can be placed quite a distance away from the house and if you're looking to kind of hide that outside unit it can be a good option they do say that split units do perform a little bit better in winter for the same reason you're just not losing the heat in the pipe work outside the home as much and the main disadvantage with a split unit is that you're going to have to have that installed by a qualified engineer because you are dealing with a refrigerant fluid that can be dangerous if it leaks. So you can't just get the plumber to do it, you're gonna probably have to pay a little bit more for the installation. But it's really horses for courses and what works better for you and your home. We've got more information about this on our website if you wanna dive a bit deeper on monoblock versus split. But for the time being, let's jump into the recommendations. So if you are looking for a good all-round solid heat pump, we would recommend the Valent Aratherm. So Valent have been making heat pumps for a long, long time. They know what they're doing. They're obviously famous for making gas boilers. They've been in heating for a long time with a very good reputation. And you shouldn't go too far wrong with a Valent Aratherm. Now it does come in three models. You've got the Aratherm Plus, which is a monoblock heat pump with great heating capacity, a very high scop, it's a high flow temperature heat pump, and it has very low noise levels for a monoblock, because monoblock, as they have a bigger unit outside, can be quite noisy. Now the split unit is a low temperature heat pump, so it's gonna you're gonna need to get your house ready for that with the right kind of insulation, the right kind of uh, radiators, underfloor, but it is a great option and there is also a third option called the Flexiterm Split and that's kind of um, a new sort of heat pump that can be used as an air source, ground source or water source unit. It does have a large internal unit however which can take up a lot of space. Now let's just go through the advantages and disadvantages again of this one. Um, we would say this is a really good model to suit most requirements of property sizes. Uh, it does use the R20 refrigerant gas, which has a very low global warming potential. Uh, you've got a flexible installation, uh, very low noise levels, and it can operate well in low temperatures up to about minus 28. 
In terms of the disadvantages of this model, um, really for maximum benefits, you need to install the whole pump system, including the controller, which can add a bit more money onto the price of the installation. But if you are looking for a good all-rounder, this does make an excellent choice. Now, if you're looking for a heat pump that's going to perform really well in cold temperatures, then we would recommend the Samson Eco Heating Plus. Now, this heat pump is really designed to perform in temperatures as low as minus 25 without any drop off in performance. Samsung has spent a lot of time really focusing on that metric and it is a great heat pump if you're worried about the outside cold or you live in a colder part of the country. It also delivers your hot water, your domestic hot water at a very toasty 75 degrees centigrade so you're not going to be worried about not having your water hot enough to have a really nice bath and shower. There are three models in the range. So you've got a monoblock heat pump, a split heat pump, and a kind of hybrid, which is the TDM Plus. Now the TDM Plus is quite an interesting setup, which we like a lot. It's a air to water pump, but it also allows you to have a air conditioning system in the summer months, which is quite unusual for an air to water system. So it's definitely worth looking at if you'd also like to have an air conditioning system for when it's outside very hot and you'd like to keep colder. Now what's quite interesting about this system as well is that the outside units are available in a very funky, very snazzy black. So if you're looking for something quite stylish, this would be a good option for you. And Samsung have something called the Samsung Climate Indoor Unit, which is designed to optimize efficiency and save space. So all in all, this is a great heat pump to use especially if you are worried about performing in the cold weather. In terms of the installation cost, you're probably looking at something from as low as 2,000 up to about 9,000. Again, it's quite difficult to give you know, concrete figures on installation. Now, in terms of the advantages, we would say this is a, you know, it's a good choice of models. You've got a lot of variation. You can really find something that's gonna suit your property, prime, your property type, but Really, one of the big advantages is <clears throat> the operation to a low temperature outside. So really, if you're worried about low temperatures, this is a heat pump to go for. It's solar compatible and the TDS Plus is a good option if you want that air conditioning during the summer. In terms of the disadvantages, it, it isn't the cheapest heat pump on the market. Um, it's not crazy expensive, but it isn't going to be the cheapest option. It still uses the R32 refrigerant, which is better than refrigerants like the 290, the R290, but it's not as good as some of the modern ultra low GWP refrigerants. And it can be more challenging to install in older homes. If you have an older home and you don't want to do a whole bunch of work in improving your insulation or changing all your radiators, you might be looking for a high temperature heat pump. And if you are, then we would continue to recommend the Dakin Altherma 3 high temperature. So in our opinion, it's still the best high temperature heat pump on the market. It is a split system and it's got an outdoor unit, a combined indoor unit and an integrated water tank. But the important thing about this heat pump is it works at a very high flow temperature around 65 degrees which really mimics a gas boiler it is a bit more expensive the cost ranges in insulation from around six thousand to twelve thousand pounds but it does have a three-year guarantee which you can extend for five years so just running through the advantages and disadvantages of this one clearly one of the main advantages is it's kind of almost a like for like replacement with your gas boiler. And if you live in an older home, it means you don't have to spend as a lot of money on all of the upgrades to your home to get the heat pump to work effectively. It's got a very low sound. It also operates really well in low temperatures up to about minus 28 degrees. The main disadvantage is just the cost. It's just gonna cost you a little bit more. But if you live in an older home, you probably need to weigh that up with the cost of the extra cost of the heat pump insulation versus going for a cheaper heat pump and then having to do a lot more upgrades to your home. So that's really one that you're going to have to weigh up and, and see whether it's, it's, worth the, it's worth the extra cost.
So now we come to the most efficient heat pump and this year we're going to be recommending the Weissmann Vitacal 222A. Weissmann have been consistently praised for the efficiency of their heat pump. They've really concentrated on that as a business and they are focusing on efficiency which is great if you're looking for something that is going to cost you less to run. Um, the 222A is a mono split hybrid heat pump so it does have an outdoor unit and an indoor unit but rather than being connected via refrigerant they're connected via water in the pipes and that just makes them a lot easier and simpler to install for reasons that we discussed earlier on in, in this video. They've really got a very high coefficient of performance so your running costs are going to be quite low with a Weissman and one of the good things about the this particular model is that they've really focused on space of the outdoor unit and noise so it's both compact and very quiet and if you're living in an area of high density housing a terraced house or in the middle of the city this is going to be a really good unit for you to put in because it's going to not it's going to disturb it's not going to disturb you or your neighbors so just running over the advantages and the disadvantages of this one uh, really one of the main advantages is your very high cop very cheap to run very economical very low noise and it's got a really uh, compact outdoor unit so it doesn't take up a lot of space however because it's a split heat pump albeit a hybrid split you are going to need a little bit more space inside because you're going to have to have an outdoor unit and an indoor unit the other disadvantage of this and it is quite a minor disadvantage in our opinion but you if you're going for the integrated water tank that's 220 liters which is plenty enough for most families but if you have a very big family or if you have a very big household it might not be enough for you so there is a little bit of a limitation there okay so this is where we come to the best option if you're looking for something lower cost and i don't think you can go far wrong with the lg thermo v it's a great heat pump it comes in three options mono hybrid and split like the previous heat pump the hybrid version has an outside unit and an inside unit but rather than be connected by refrigerant it's connected by water so it's much easier and cheaper to install um, if you're short of space obviously you can go for the monoblock uh, model again that means that it's going to be a cheaper and uh, simpler installation but these are really great heat pumps if you're looking for something which is going to perform well but is going to have a low initial cost. In terms of the advantages and disadvantages, um, really the main advantage on this one is going to be cost. It is a very cost effective heat pump that still performs well. It performs well down to a low temperature, minus 25 degrees centigrade, and it's still going to give you quite a decent hot water temperature of about 65 degrees. In terms of the disadvantage, the low temperature model does mean you're going to have to replace some of your radiators insulation if you're living in an older property also uh, we would say potentially noise this is not the quietest heat pump outside it's not crazy noisy but there are less noisy models available if you're really looking for that and that's going to be an issue for you so finally we come to the best air source heat pump for smaller properties and this year we're recommending the Neeb 2050. Now Neeb is a Scandinavian firm, bit smaller, bit less well known, but they do do an excellent range of heat pumps. And obviously the Scandinavians do know one or two things about keeping warm, especially in the winter months. Um, these units are really, really good. The F2050 is a compact heat pump with a very discreet appearance and low noise levels, but it still works well into temperatures as low as minus 20. They do do a high, t high temperature heat pump as well, if that's what you're looking for. And I think the model is the S2125, and that can supply water up to about uh, 75 degrees centigrade, so really a good replacement for a gas boiler and if you have an older home. Um, Cost-wise, probably something between about 3,500 to 9,000, including insulation. So in terms of the advantages of this heat pump, it's great if you have a smaller property as it's compact but it's still a great unit, it still performs well. In terms of the disadvantages, really it's a little, just a little bit more expensive. Um, 
Some customers have complained about long call out times to resolve issues, but we don't know whether that is still a problem. So guys, there you have it. That's our recommendations of the Best Heat Pump 2025. I really hope you found some useful information there. And if you're thinking about installing a heat pump, I hope you got some inspiration, something important, something that's useful. If you need to find out more information or you just need to do some further reading about heat pumps, please do visit our website, www.weloveheatpumps.com. We've got a whole ton of information on there about heat pump installation, cost of running a heat pump, all of the technical sides of heat pump ownership, everything in there. We really think you're gonna find some useful stuff. If you like this video, please do hit the subscribe button. It really helps us get the word out there. Please do leave a comment below. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. And in the meantime, we will see you on the next video.